Ah, oh, what to paint, what to paint. What's that weird green? What's that? Watcher in the dark? Trouble at the old mill? No? What is it then? Deathwing Assault? Oh, you want me to paint some Dark Angels? Yeah, that seems in character. It's tabletop time. So Games Workshop have very kindly sent us Deathwing Assault, which is the new launch box for the relaunch of Dark Angels. And I have to say, I've always been a fan of Dark Angels. Hammering into that Space Marine monk slash knight aesthetic is probably my favorite thing about Space Marines, the juxtaposition of science fiction and fantasy. So I was really pleased to be getting this set. And in general, I'm excited and impressed with the entire Dark Angels range. So today I'm going to be convinced converting up and customizing one of these Deathwing Knights into an awesome character for my Shields of Avalon. So I've already made Merlin and Gawain as named characters and today I'm going to be making something cool which is a very knightly Terminator. So I'm going to build that, convert it up and then once I've done it I'm going to sort of have a think about where that's going to fit in my army proper. All right we have an absolute smorgasbord of new sprue. So we've got a nice three sprue set for the new Terminator kit which is really cool. Do I have to say I'm not in love with the helmets. It's the one thing on the knight kit I'm not a big fan of. But you do have the very cool hooded heads, which I think broadly are my preference. It's actually really neat to see feathers sneak back into some Dark Angel design. I feel like we haven't seen feathers in a very long time. I'm especially liking the look of this shield with the split down the center for some heraldry. And I'm already getting some ideas for this conversion. Now, as for the upgrade sprue that you get two of in this box, broadly, I think this Primera Scale Bits Pack is what's been needed to make some really cool Dark Angels forces for a long time. As for the rest of the box, we have the limited edition codex. Oh, and he's got a nice shiny golden key. Isn't that lovely? Things I do want to say is while the book is, is decent, I was a little disappointed to not see the lore of what happened after Vashtor kind of fleshed out. They're very vague on what's going on with Fallen that are good boys now. And I would have loved to see a little, a few more tidbits, but it's almost brushed over in this book, which is a bit interesting. All right, so this is a big selling point for this box for me. Data cards are really expensive separately. We've got some instructions, which will be of almost no use to us throughout this video because um, I'm gonna be converting. So after seeing all these wonderful new sprues, I'm most excited about the Deathwing Knights. I don't have a Terminator character for my Shields of Avalon and I'd like to convert one up. So I'm gonna use a majority of one of these Deathwing Knights to create the bulk of this model and see what I can do to turn the dour, downtrodden, grimdark monks of 40K into a glorious noble knight. Let's start cutting some sprue. So the first thing to do was to select a core torso so for this conversion. I chose the one striding forward as I wanted an impressive silhouette and could picture him on the battlefield. Then just clipped out all the bits, cleaned them up nicely and started gluing them together. So the Deathwing Knights are gorgeously covered in detail, which is really cool for Deathwing Knights. But for my Arthurian Knights, my Shields of Avalon, I want to tone it back a little bit more to evoke that classic knightly armor. One of the more precarious things I have to do is painstakingly carve off this Aquila, the Dark Angel symbol on the chest of this model. So I'm going to do that carefully. The big fear with doing things like this is actually just ruining the rest of the detail. Carving too deep or more importantly slipping with the knife and cutting or scuffing the robes that are surrounding it. So I'm approaching this very delicately just carefully peeling back bits of plastic one layer at a time. Once I'm done with the knife I'll come in with a file to smooth all of that off. So I basically filed down details and picked choice parts but I haven't done much in terms of kit bashing yet. But a whole bunch of opportunities have opened up for me. Let's go take a look. When I started the Shields of Avalon, things like the Warhammer Old World Bretonians weren't back, nor were the Seas of Sigma. So if I want to bring a medieval knightly Arthurian vibe in, I have a feeling these boxes are going to contain some perfect bits. Let's go look. 
So while I had a look through the Cities of Sigma parts, there wasn't really anything that useful to me. The modern design philosophy of not having many options and every part being needed for every model means there aren't a whole lot of spare bits or gubbins or add-ons that aren't sculpted on. The Bretonians, however, had a few more choice options. Within them, I found a helmet and a lance from the Bretonian Knights kit. Now the helmet, I just have to trim down the excess details and place that in the center of this Space Marine. As for the lance, I will chop the end off this great relic hammer and chop the end off the lance, joining the two with a bit of glue to make the ultimate power lance fusion. I kept the haft of the power weapon because then it keeps all the gribbly power weapon bits. And with some simple cleanup, this was done. So this is coming along and I gotta say, I've got a good problem. I'm liking this almost too much. The Bretonian head, uh, I didn't think would work, but it kind of fits perfectly with the shield and the lance. This is coming along really well, but I do think he needs something up top. So I'm gonna take the head of this Bretonian horseman and chop off the little decoration on the top. It's a serpent or a dragon with a little banner, which I think is perfect for Arthur Pendragon's men. So uh, he'll have a little dragon emblem up top. It might look a little silly, might not, who knows? I don't know, I'm really liking this. I think these Bretonian parts work so well on 40K Space Marines. Let me know what you think. I wanted to share a tiny bit of the background behind the Shields of Avalon with anyone who doesn't know. So the Shields of Avalon are a Space Marine chapter founded in the second founding by the Ultramarines. They're a chapter that recruits on and is based on an Imperial Knight world. And in the millennia serving upon this world, taking the firstborn sons of noble families as their recruits, they have amalgamated some of the Coach Valoric and the Imperial Knight style behavior into their chapter. And that Imperial Knight house holds heavily to what they call human history, the legends of King Arthur, which somehow they ended up with upon their ships. The company captains of each company take on the moniker or the name of one of King Arthur's legendary knights. So after fiddling around with that little dragon topper, I realized it looked kind of silly. Sometimes those old Bretonian bits don't work on modern 40k sculpts, but I did find one with some antler horns that I think is a bit more symmetrical and a little bit less goofy, and I think that worked well on top. And then I could move on to basing. So I usually glue my model onto a base with a tiny dot of super glue to paint on and then work on the actual base for the miniature separately. So that's what I'm doing here. And the vibe I'm going for is a medieval soldier walking down a cobblestone path. So to do that, I'm using some corkboard to build up a little stepping stone. So it's gonna sort of come down toward the viewing angle, which should help to make the model look more imposing and purposeful as he sort of strides towards the quote unquote camera. Once these corkboard pieces have dried, the plan is that I'm gonna use the extra miller part I mixed up for the top of the model. And then I'm gonna use that to make a cobblestone road. So in the lower section, the idea is that these cobbles have sort of broken up. The path is crumbling due to the desolation and war in the land. I don't know, something like that. And while this is drying, I like to remove the extra miller part, but doing it around the cobbles so it looks natural. Otherwise it just looks like, well, a texture roller has <laughs> rolled through. So earlier I talked a bit about the Shields of Avalon and the army that I'm creating, but I haven't talked about the color choices I need to make when I paint these models. Here I have a good sum of the painted models of this force and an example of three different paint schemes. So the Shields of Avalon comprise of a primary color gray a secondary color yellow, and then each company has a third color. This is so I can have a chapter full of knightly heraldry that feels quite a lot like knights of old, English knights, and most importantly, the knights of King Arthur. The first model I ever painted for the Shields of Avalon was this one here. This is Gawain. And when I was reading into the Knights of the Round Table, Gawain symbolized a lot of strength and power, and that's why I went for the Power Fist model. It seemed like a good fit. Following on from Gawain, I painted up his squad on the channel and these as members of his company started to show that reflected heraldry, sharing the patterns of their Lord. This way within each company, I have scope to have a Lieutenant that has the same colors, but a different heraldic pattern and squads that follow him directly sharing that. The next model I painted on the channel was Merlin. And Merlin took the blue of the Librarius, but I also decided that he would share the company colors of Lancelot, which will be the second company. Merlin is technically part of second company Company with some of the most trusted advisors of Chapter Master Arthur. Recently on the channel, I painted this scout and I went for green as the company he'll be assigned to. And that's where we'll find the green knight. I try to incorporate just little tidbits of the Arthurian lore into the choice of both color and also what the company represents. Red being a color of anger,
Rhaegar and Strength is the close assault company that Gawain leads. While Blue, Lancelot and Merlin, it's more intellectual and tactical. Green, the Green Knight, involves scouting and fast assaults because the knight has to be on a bike, right? That's the only thing that makes sense. But that leaves my model today. So I've converted up this Terminator and traditionally Terminators are part of the first company. And in this army, the first company, well, that would be King Arthur's company. So when I think of the color to choose to associate with it, I'm juggling through iterations. Do I go purple? Do I go pink? Do I go brown? What other heraldic color could I use? But ultimately it came back to the fact that Technically, the Shields of Avalon are an Ultramarine's second founding chapter. They're part of the 500 Worlds of Ultramar. And sharing some of that as well is important in the chapter. And in the Ultramarines, the first company are white and veterancy is indicated by white. And white is a common color we associate with crusades, tabards of crusading knights, and eras like King Arthur and his knights. I mean, even Monty Python, I think of King Arthur with his white tabard with a red cross. Who's that then? That's a bit king. Go on. He hasn't got all over it. Dave from the future here, uh, I actually just had a look before I started painting to make sure I remembered correctly and turns out King Arthur uh, doesn't have heraldry because he's a mythical figure from the 6th century and heraldry didn't come about until like the 12th and 13th. What I was thinking of was in fact Monty Python's King Arthur and it is white and yellow which is exactly the colours this is going to turn out so I think that's perfect. Uh, back to me an hour ago. So that's what I'm going with, I'm going with white. So I'm going to paint up this character. Because this is Arthur's company, that means this isn't a captain, but he is going to be the leader of Arthur's bodyguard, the Terminator squad that will journey with him. Let's see if I can make a really imposing Terminator knight with these colors. And um, let me know if you've got some ideas for other knights of the round table and how I could use colors I haven't already used to build companies out for them. It'd be really cool to get your ideas, just like I got your ideas to name the chapter. It wouldn't be the Shields of Avalon without you. But let's Let's go paint this model, starting with a spray undercoat. Oh, my old body. So originally when I painted my Shields of Avalon, I airbrushed on a gradient of gray, but that was a few years ago. And I've now found myself quite fond of using dry brushing techniques with high quality dry brushes. So I dry brush on a gradient of gray going from Viejo's heavy charcoal through storm vermin fur and ending up with scape and black dinge. This is just a gentle process of building up the grays with the dry brush, but it's also a relatively quick process. And doing all of this armor probably took me around five minutes. I really like the smooth blends and transitions that it gets without the hassle of having to pick up and use a airbrush, cleaning it afterwards, etc. for a single model. However, I could still see myself using the airbrush if I was batch painting them. With this done, it was time to move on to the first of the heraldic colors. I'm starting with white because it will be the most painful, but as a knight, I'm gonna keep this kind of off-white and a little bit cream. To get a stronger base tone, I start with Viejo Khaki, and then I build up, blending in some bone white and then all the way up to Alphic Flesh. This is a process of going back and forth, combining layer painting with glazing to moderate success. Dealing with whites is always really difficult, but I just continue working it until I'm happy with it. Now for both of these steps, I don't place the final highlights are the white and also the highlights that are going to go on the gray. I'll do that all over the model at the end as a final step so I can make sure that I do the lighting in a consistent way across the whole model. So I'm about to paint the yellow elements of the heraldry and I have here Warlord Purple from Viejo. The reason I've got that is because to get a really strong and vibrant yellow, sometimes basing it in pink or purple is a great tip. This tip has been passed around a lot by Warhammer YouTubers, but if you haven't heard it, I thought I'd mention it. I first learned about it watching uh, Brent's video, Goober Town Hobbies. He did a video where he showed off this technique and I believe in that video he also shouted out the person he learned it from. So it's kind of like a pay it forward thing with try basing your yellows with pinks and reds. Uh, it's really interesting but you'll see that in a second as we dive into the yellow parts of the heraldry. So with the magenta down I can do the similar process as I did with the white just blending up a series of yellows until we get to a nice bright highlight. So over the course of painting the model, the, the spear, the spear broke. And funnily enough, not where I cut and converted it, just in the handle, it just broke. I didn't drop it, I maybe lent on it slightly, but there was no incident where it broke. It just sort of 
fell off and it was really annoying. So I wonder if that had been bent at some point in the packaging or whatever. But uh, that means this this lance is gonna be a nightmare to glue back on and a nightmare to stay glued on. So um, yeah. But for painting the model, it's actually gonna be easier. So I'm gonna paint this separately and uh, deal with that later. the primary colors of the heraldry down, it was time to move on to the non-metallic metal gold. I don't want this to stand out too heavily away from my other armies, so I'm trying to paint it as closely to the previously painted models as possible, even though I painted them a few years ago. Once the gold is done, I can start moving on to even more tertiary colors. All of the purity seals are painted in burgundy, as well as the rope and hearts of the weapons on this model. And once this is done, I use rosy flesh tones to highlight it before gently using a wash to put some crimson in the recesses. This gives a really dark burgundy red look of the wax seal and the rope, which I think really fits as a fantastic accent color for these royal style knights. With these accent areas done, there aren't many left, but that does leave the purity seals, which I then paint in a khaki. I highlight these up quite scratchily to get the effect of parchment or vellum that's been bent and creased, which leaves those little white stress marks on it. And then using a tiny bit of paint, I scribble on text all over these markers, giving the illusion of lines and breaks with lots of vertical momentum and tiny gaps. It's almost stippling with a fine detail brush to get this effect. At the same time as I paint the parchment as it's a similar color, I also paint the bones in the reliquary. And after these bones are done, I take those same techniques up top to the antlers and give them a nice bit of paint as well. With a larger surface area, I can focus more on gradients of brown to bring that in. And then using a fine detail brush, paint on some thin lines to create a bit of texture on that surface. Another major area left to do is the silver metallics. And to paint all of these, I use non-metallic metal as well. Using somber gray and wolf gray from Vallejo to create a nice bluey metallic. And this is important important to keep it a distinct set of tones from the gray armor and I think it really helps to make it stand out and separate the two areas. While most of this model is warm tones, this is the only cool tone on the model, which once again helps to highlight it as part of the high-tech machinery rather than some of the warmer heraldry. And now that I've bulked out the painting on pretty much the whole model, it's time to move on to some of the fun stuff. So um, it happened. See the evidence there? That's paint. Um, so I guess at some point I started enjoying paint with my coffee. That's the price of hobby. So the final steps to my project is freehand and the base. Now I decided to directly reference the source material here, which means we are getting King Arthur from Monty Python's heraldry, the glowing sun with the mustache uh, on this shield and painting that up with some careful brushwork and a series of khaki paint colors, just blending back and forth with dark and lights until I can match the on-screen sun. I love this stupid eighties mustache sun. So <laughs> there it is. Is. That's his sigil, the personal guard of Arthur uh, with his glorious heraldry. And then the last step here is just to paint up the base. Now to do the base, I keep some quite dark and medieval tones thinking about the materials there. Painting all the bricks in a terracotta before a dry brush of flesh tone and a wash to bring it back down. All of the dirt areas just with earth and a soft dry brush of a brighter color. And then lastly, painting up the brazier to just have some embers of coals just burning away. A few little flecks of orange and red in mostly black and coals that have long since burnt out. And then to tie this in with the rest of my forces, a touch of flock here and there and some flowers to bring some life into the scene. With that, it's time to check out my model. We'd like to thank all of our patrons for your amazing support. It's because of you that we can continue to make all of these videos. And if you'd like to consider joining up and supporting the channel, we have weekly behind the scenes vlogs, as well as a monthly mini review where you can send in your minis and Jen Murray and I will take a look at them, give you any pointers if you want them, or otherwise just tell you, well done for getting some models painted. It's up to you. So once again, thank you so much for your support patrons. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. I haven't seen the results of my own work yet. It's still not quite finished, but we only got this a day and a bit ago and um, it's like four o'clock on a Friday. So if we're gonna have any chance of editing this, it's gotta happen now. So I'm gonna keep gluing this bit together. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you wanna see more of King Arthur's Knights from my Shields of Avalon. I'd love to hear your suggestions and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. It just won't glue. <laughs> We gotta do reveals now and then edit them. <laughs>